Today is Tuesday, September 10, 2024. It's a few minutes before 8 a.m. Eastern. I'm Sam Morton. We have levels on the board per usual, and you'll notice there's one level that is a lighter color. It's kind of, well, it is the close from yesterday, and in the pre-market, they've been pretty much above it, below it. It's kind of hanging around this level, and for me, it's sort of a like a line in the sand that if they can get above it and stay above it for a while, perhaps they're going higher, you know, probably meet some resistance on the way. And the same thing if they get below, perhaps they're going lower, but it, I'm not sure it's really a tradable area. Just going to keep an eye on it. And there's really no data releases scheduled today that could move the market. Any, nothing of significance. There is a, um, a comedy show this evening, also known as the presidential debate. We'll see what happens there. And then, of course, tomorrow, um, pretty important anniversary, 9-11. And we have some data releases like some CPI numbers coming out in the morning. So perhaps they're waiting on something. We'll see. Um, don't really see a lot of conviction one way or the other is kind of moving around after that big jump from last week or big drop from last week. So we'll come back to this same chart this evening after the market closes and analyze any trades that were taken when the SBY hits these levels or hits a level and triggers a trade in the immediate futures. Catch you on the other side. And we're back after seven o'clock PM. So we had some activity today and they climbed a little bit after dropping. Obviously you can see what happened. And three levels were hit. So let's just focus on these three levels and talk about what would have happened if you were playing by the rules, treating this like a process. I got pulled into some meetings early on, and really did not expect to be as busy as I was today. So I just looked at the market for the first time, probably about an hour ago, 45 minutes ago or so, and kind of analyzing everything. So I didn't take any trades, no recordings to show of any live trades, but strictly adhering to the rules, you could have got some trades, not necessarily made the money unless you... Uh, let me just put me back up and just say that I even now haven't looked at any other like smaller time frames, you know, 10 minute, 15 hour, 30 minute, whatever, um, other than a couple larger time frames, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So I don't know at the time if, you know, what I would have done necessarily, because I like to look at all these other analysis charts to make a decision when I'm trading. So just strictly looking at this little one minute chart, uh, let's talk about what could have happened. So this first level, it's been moved up five cents to 548.23. And I went ahead and put profit target objective and the fumble threshold reference levels here on the board. So what happens after 945? Well, well, just to start off with, let's just point out here that when they open, let's just get this out of the way. That was the close of the previous day. They opened above this at uh, 548.36, came right down into, I think it's to the penny of 528.18. Yeah, 548.18 to the penny took off. And that's kind of a base hit. Now, I don't take trades you know, after... I like to let 15 minutes kind of go by before I take trades, but that's kind of a, starts to tell you something right here. You know, so they came down, hit this level pretty precisely, bounced off, kind of playing around. But 945, 15 minutes after the market opened here at the Eastern time zone, they were up here, 548.51 right here. So if you bought, the next time they came, a couple minutes later, they bounced within pennies. Like this is definitely within 10 cents, the high here, this next a few candles later. Once again, a couple more times. When they do this and they come back really fast, like that's your 40 cent or four points in the ES base hit right there, but they kind of come up shy of hitting the profit target and come back, you, you'd want to second guess a trade. You'd have pl several opportunities to jump out at a wash. So I'm going to code this as a wash. If I were trading this, I would have definitely second guessed. I might have been out of the money a little bit before I jumped out, but not really trusting it. And the same thing down here at this. So anyway, this is a no, no trade here. Would have entered the trade, jumped out at a wash at, at a break even. This other level down here, I told you, was probably not really a tradable level. It's just kind of a reference level for me. Essentially, it's the close from yesterday. Just leaving this alone, not going to adjust it. Sort of the same thing. In fact, I'll just probably just move this down here. So there's your profit target. That's 40 cents or the equivalent of four points. And you're down here would be you know, your, your fumble threshold here. Well, they kind of did the same thing. When they hit it the first time, they came up within pennies of hitting your base hit. It's kind of hard to see, but that's it right there, just pennies. Like one minute later, not even a minute. You think about Think of what's going on in this candle. They open up here, came all the way down, triggered your trade, and in the same candle came back up. You know, well, the next minute came back up, pretty close. So when they're, it looks like they're weak. They're gonna probably gonna go lower. So once again, I would just jump out of the wash on this thing. Now, if you waited this thing out, obviously it did provide some type of support and didn't close any significant candles under the fumble threshold. But I'm not sure how good that would have felt. I mean, I, these are the rules that I've I like to trade with and I've come up with and that work for me. So. I'd rather be safe and prudent than take a chance. So by jumping out at a wash, I basically just at zero. If you held on and took a more risk by just giving this trade more time, it would have given you a base hit eventually. As you can tell, they jumped up, pulled up. But for me, just using this objectively, trading it like a process, 
there is no trade here in my book. And then down here at 544.65, now I would adjust this. Like this, this is the, the close. I'm not going to mess around with this level. That's why I didn't mess with the uh, create a five cent buffer on this one. But here, that would be 544.70, right? So let's, let's bring these down here. So there's our fumble threshold and cents, roughly 40 cents in the E-minis. So kind of, there's really no reason you wouldn't have bought here. And this is because the way they come into this, they're coming down into a level pretty hard and these levels usually have some significance. So while it might feel kind of weird to be out of the money, you've seen this happen plenty of times before. I've showed you these, I've been in the trades. I mean, even yesterday I was out of the money for a while with four contracts. But anyway, my point in t telling you all this is none of this down here meant anything in terms of the function of time. And given this some time, they would have given you a base hit or more, depends on how much you can carry this thing up. Now, do you take this for a recycle trade? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Uh, I'm not sure what I would have done because I wasn't looking at any other analysis charts at the time. And I haven't even looked at it today. Just I'm going to show you a couple other things somewhat related. But you would have been looking for a, a recycle trade. In other words, now you're going to go on the short side thinking they're going to bounce and pull back. And let's just go ahead and put this where it needs to be. There we go. And obviously they didn't happen. They immediately got up. Well, I went ahead and looked at this and thought, okay, where's my signal? And the signal happened to be five points out of the money before they took off. So if you traded this for a short trade, all this bouncing around, bouncing around, you waited for something to happen. Sure enough, it happened. You gave five points back to the market when you reversed and it took up or it took off and you would have had a base hit or more on the way back up. Now, I want to point, a few, point out a few things here. Let's take this little green level and, this, and let's just use it for something else. Maybe I'll just make it a different color just to not be too confusing here. How's this? So when they did this and couldn't get above this area and fell down, just kind of, you know, it's, you can keep an eye on this for, for future reference, right? Same thing down here. Why couldn't the market get up here and get past this point? Once again, let's just make this a different color. You know, they came up shy. I mean, they fell away from our level. They came up, you know, quite a distance away, five or six points, fell away. So, so just kind of pay attention to where, where these levels are because they kind of are drawing some lines of support and resistance on the chart for later. And it also helps to look at other larger time frames, moving averages, Fibonacci, a lot of other tools you can use. But the point is, if you had this, you know, either a mental line here or you just you just put this on the chart for reference, you start to see things happening. And if I saw this happening, I'd be kind of leery about taking this trade for a short side on the recycle, for a short trade on the recycle of this as they're coming back up into this. A few reasons is that generally that when you have a bullish move and you're having some type of consolidation, which that's what this is. They're consolidating under this, this level that was basically created from this, you know, kind of a breakdown area. They couldn't get there up here or they couldn't get past it here. They were trying for another attempt. And so this type of bullish consolidation is going to play out to the upside. Do I want to go short at this level again? You know, they're telling me something here. I mean, this obviously is a level that wasn't on the board from this morning, but you can identify it in real time. And sort of the same thing here. Let's just say you took this trade. I'm going to code it as such assuming you don't really know the rules that I have. But if you went short here and then you saw, so you're looking for a profit down here somewhere. I mean, you would have actually moved this. It was 518, 548.18. So we're going to bring it down to like what, 548.13. I mean, you would have gone short right in the middle of this thing. Not knowing what it's going to do at this point. You know, you know nothing to the right of this trade that you just jumped in. I don't, I don't need the levels. You can see what's going on. They didn't come down enough to give you a base hit. But all this back and forth, this is a consolidation just like this that tells you they're probably going to go higher. So you had a plenty of chances to jump out at a break even or maybe in the money or out of the money, whatever. But this would have been a wash in my book. So the day would have been, you know, not spectacular, but unless you were able to go on the short side and ride some of this down or take this thing all the way up because this was support. It just took time to, to develop. So before we go to the tracking log, I want to show you a couple other things that could be indicative of what we might have coming in the near future. Here's a daily chart. Pay attention to kind of this breakdown candle here. They're, they're climbing back up inside this breakdown candle. I'm kind of putting a line near the high of this breakdown candle. So if we go into like, say, here's a four-hour chart. Here's a, what would typically be a bearish consolidation. And they're under some, they're basically right at, you know, 50 period, 100 period moving averages. The top of this breakdown areas or this breakdown candles here. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 four-hour candles, give or take. Tomorrow will be the seventh, eighth, whatever. Timing's getting kind of getting important. Let's start looking at some other ones. Here's a hundred, uh, what is this? Three hour chart, 180 minutes, same thing. So they're kind of consolidated inside this. They're kind of gotten, they've gotten above some important move, moving averages, but they're hitting some resistance at this point. Here's a two hour chart starting to see the same thing, right? 
they're constrained by you know 200 period and 100 period just like it was on the think the four hour chart so this is something i just looked at you know for the first time 30 40 minutes ago thinking well if they can't get above this if they gap above this possibly they're going higher but this generally is bearish so we might have some kind of thing building up for tomorrow timing seems to be right where this thing can fall down here somewhere so we'll see if i got some levels of support that look or sorry resistance overhead resistance that look pretty good in the morning then I would probably want to be on the short side. However, if we get something unusual after this presidential debate this evening and whatever happens in the morning, CPI data releases and things at 8.30 Eastern, and the bulls get uh, kind of a, a rally, and they gap above or you know pull above here in the overnight in the futures, and then here we are like above this and, and going higher, then this is off the table. But at, just at face value, this is, this is generally bearish. So I just want to point that out before we look at the log. Playing by the rules... You can read all this. I talked through it. Essentially, washes because of a near miss of that profit target two times in a row, base hit, and trying for the recycle. I went ahead and I'm coding them all in here. So just to show you what happened, you would have given back five points, but you had two base hits of eight. So above water, but not very much. And then uh, no trades for me. Here's the three levels that were hit. I didn't take any trades. Wasn't at my trading computer. In fact, I was using my trading computer for some video editing for something at work because it has a much better GPU than my work computer. But anyway, wasn't able to trade today. So anyway, that's it for today. Tomorrow morning could be interesting or tomorrow could be interesting after, uh, you know, things that are happening. I don't know. Things tend to happen cyclically, as you know, and tomorrow is a very important anniversary. And who knows? Just kind of just be aware of what's what's going on around you tomorrow in the market. We'll have more levels on the board tomorrow morning and another game plan. Thanks again for watching and subscribing and liking these videos. Appreciate the support. Have a great rest of your day. See you in the next recap video.